In this video, we are going to talk about exponent rules, in particular, negative exponents. So we've talked about ex negative exponents in one of the other videos like this. If we had x to the fourth over x to the second, we said that if the bases were the same, that we subtract the exponents. And if w the value we got was positive, we would know that it would be in the numerator, so there would be nothing down here. And then if we had a problem like this, the bases are the same. Actually, I want to switch those. So if I had a 2 here and a 5 there, if we subtract the exponents, we'd have 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And we said that if something has a negative exponent, we're going to move it to the denominator, and if there's nothing there, we put a 1. Okay, so that's what we talked about in one of the other videos. Now what we're focusing on is negative exponents that could already be given to us in the denominator as negative. So when we subtract the exponents and we get a negative, we put them to the bottom. If we subtract the exponents it's positive, we put them on the top. But now we're talking about what if, like this problem, the original problem already has negative exponents given to us in the denominator. What do we do? So, here's the rule. If a base has a negative exponent in the numerator, we're going to move it to the denominator. However, if the base already has, or if the base has a negative exponent and it's already in the denominator, we're going to move it to the denominator. So we can remember it as if there's a negative um, exponent, it's going to move locations. And we're never going to leave our answers with a negative exponent. So when you circle your answer, it should never have negative exponents because we just learned here what to do with them. We're going to move them. So I want to make sure we understand why we move the exponents. So we know that 2 to the third power, when the exponent's positive, it tells us how many of that base to multiply. And we talked about in one of the other videos what a zero exponent means. And we see that there's a pattern here that if I divide by the base, I get the next number in the pattern. Okay, so we know that it equals 1. Well, now, so I'm just making these exponents right here. I'm just dropping it by 1 here. So 3, 2, 1, 0. So 0 minus 1, that would put us at 2 to the negative first power. And then if I drop that by 1, I get 2 to the negative second power. So if I keep this pattern going and I divide by 2, like I am here, divide by 2, divide by 2, I get the next number. So if I do 1 divided by 2, 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. Well, 0.5 as a fraction is 1 half. So now if I keep the pattern going, and now I do one half so we're dividing by two each time so now I'm going to divide by two here so one half divided by two that's the same thing we know our fraction rules is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal we get one fourth well one fourth is the same thing as point two five the next number here is 0.25 as a fraction is a fourth. So when we have negative exponents, what's happening is we're doing 2 to the first power, which is 2, but it's moving to the denominator here. We do 2 to the second power, which is 4, but the 4 goes to the denominator. So as you could see, when something has a negative exponent, it doesn't make the value negative. 
it makes it smaller. It makes it, instead of two, now it's making it one half. And instead of four, it's making it 0.25. So when something has a negative exponent and it's in the numerator, it's not in the denominator, it's moving down to the denominator because it's making the value smaller. So when something has a negative exponent, it moves to the denominator. But if it's already given to us in the denominator like it is here, it's going to move up and become bigger. So let's go ahead and practice this. So if we have 7 to the negative second power, this negative exponent we're going to ignore, and we're going to do 7 to the second power, which is 49, but because it has this negative exponent here, the 49 moves to the denominator. And if we have a denominator, we need a numerator, so we're going to put a 1 here. And why do we put the 1? Well, we could see here that it was equal to a half and a fourth, so there's always a 1 up there when there's nothing else next to it. Okay, here we have negative 5 to the negative second power. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore this exponent, or the negative there, and I'm going to figure out what is it without the negative exponent. So it would be negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. But because it had this negative exponent here, that 25 goes to the denominator. And if I have a denominator, I need a numerator. So that would be my answer there. Okay, next example here. Remember that the exponent, this exponent, only goes what's to what's next to it. So this 2 right here is a coefficient, and there is no exponent right here. There is not one. So this 2 right here does not have a negative exponent. It's going to stay. But the x has a negative exponent, and it moves to the denominator. So that would be our final answer. Okay, here we have... We can't subtract the exponents here because the bases aren't the same. We have a P and then we have a Q. So all we can do here is, since this P has a negative exponent, we move it to the denominator. And since this Q doesn't have a negative, it's just going to stay. And I'm going to put it second since I'm going to put it in alphabetical order. And so since this moved down here, there's nothing in the numerator, so I'm going to put a 1. Whenever there's nothing in the numerator, you got to put a 1. Okay, so here we have a negative exponent, so I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to figure out what is that equal without a negative exponent. So that's 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. Now, because it has a negative exponent, the negative is going to change the location of the numbers. So since it's in parentheses, the whole thing, the numerator and the denominator, has that exponent that is negative. So that means it's going to flip. So we're going to have 9 fourths as our final answer. Another way to think of this problem as this negative 2 exponent is going to be distributed to the numerator and the denominator. Because it's in parentheses, it's all included with that exponent. So if we do 2 to the negative second power, when something has a negative exponent, we're going to do it as if there was no negative, so 2 squared is 4, but because it had a negative, it's going to move here. And then here we'd have 3 squared, but we would pretend like it didn't have a negative, 3 to the second power is 9, but because it does, it moves to the top. Now, another reason why the answer is 9 fourths is because if you think about this, 2 to the negative second power is 1 over 4. 
right? 2 to the negative second power is a fourth. And then 3 to the negative second power, that's a ninth. Because 3 to the second power is 9. And it goes to the bottom. So technically, this is what this problem looks like. Well, we know our fraction rules. That if we have 1 fourth, and this means divide, divided by a ninth. And we know that we... Div division is the same thing as if we use our, we flip this right here, we get 9 fourths, the long way. So it's much easier to utilize the rule, but this is showing you what it's saying. This all here is what this, is, this means if I write it out the long way. Alright, last one here. So the bases are not the same, so I can't subtract the exponents. So since this has a negative exponent, the x does, it's going to move to the denominator. And since the y has a negative exponent, it's going to move to the numerator. And this will be the final answer.